Hi, boys and girls. We're going to continue with our reading of Cam Jansen, The Chocolate Fudge Mystery. So we finished chapter six with Cam and her dad and the Millers and Eric, and they were watching the yellow house to see if anyone was there. And the cat was licking up the milk and the cat stopped. Its legs were bent. It was ready to run. Mr. Jansen said it heard something. He and the Millers bent down behind the hedge and it was a creaking sound. Then the back door of the yellow house opened. Chapter six. Scram! A tall, thin man with a light brown beard came out of the house. He was wearing blue jeans and a dark green shirt. The man ran across the back porch and chased the cat away. Cam stood up. She looked straight at the man, blinked her eyes and said, click. Then she quickly sat down. The man watched the cat run off. He picked up the juice carton, cereal box and the few other groceries that were on the porch. He put them all in the large box and carried them into the house. That's not Mr. Pell, Mr. Miller whispered. I'll bet he's a criminal and that house is his hideaway. We should call the police, Eric said. Oops, to visualize it. I can't keep standing here. I'm tired, Mrs. Miller said. Let's go inside. Eric and Mr. Jansen followed the Millers into the house. Cam continued to watch the back of the yellow house. The door opened. The tall, thin man came outside. He was carrying a broom and a large, empty, black plastic bag. He looked around. Then he walked down the steps of the back porch. He put the empty milk carton in the bag. He then swept away as much of the milk as he could. The man turned and looked right at where Cam was sitting. He stood there for a minute. Then he went into the house. Cam waited. When the man didn't come out again, she joined Eric and the others and Mrs. Miller in the Miller's kitchen. Cam washed her hands with soap. Then she looked to see what the others were doing. Cam's father and the Millers were sitting by the table drinking coffee and eating cookies, chocolate fudge bars, and rice cakes. Eric was reading into a large was reaching, sorry, into a large paper bag filled with newspapers. The Millers recycle their newspapers, Eric told Cam, and the pickup isn't until tomorrow. I'm looking for the paper with the ding-dong headline. If we find that, we'll know when the man went into hiding. Mrs. Miller was eating a rice cake. She put it down and said, I think he's the Pell's nephew. Mrs. Pell told me how he works and he hates to be disturbed when he writes. Is her nephew tall and thin, Cam asked. Does he have a beard? Maybe, I've never seen him. Eric emptied the bag of newspapers onto the floor. The daily newspapers, a few supermarket flyers, and the weekly community newspaper fell out. Here it is, here's the ding dong paper, Eric said. Now, I'm going to look for a report of an escaped criminal who's hiding somewhere. What's the date on the paper, Cam asked. Eric showed her the masthead. It's Tuesday's newspaper. Cam looked through the pile of newspapers on the floor and she found Wednesday, the Wednesday newspaper and began to look through it. Mr. Jansen put down his cup of coffee and asked Cam, why are you looking at Wednesday's paper? If that man went into hiding on Tuesday for something he just did, then it would be written up on the ne next day's paper on Wednesday, Cam explained. When Eric heard that, he closed his newspaper. He looked through the Wednesday paper with Cam. Some stores will deliver groceries, Mrs. Miller said. If the Pell's nephew is busy writing, he may not have time to go shopping. But that's why there was a box of food on the back porch. Cam turned the page of the newspaper. Mrs. Miller went on. Many years ago, I tried to write a story for a mystery magazine. But as soon as I sat down to write, the telephone rang. Then the mail was delivered. Then it was time for me to eat lunch. The pal's nephew probably just doesn't want to be disturbed. 
That's why he's pretending that no one is home. Look at this, Eric said. He pointed to a column with the headline, Crime Watch. Eric picked up the newspaper and read from it. In a daring robbery today at the Midtown Savings Bank, a teller was handed a withdrawal slip for $10,000. You must fill in your account number and sign your name, the teller told the man. The man showed the teller a gun and said, you have just one minute to get me the money. The thief is described as tall and thin with light brown hair. That's him. That's the man hiding next door, Cam said. Chapter 7. Mr. Miller picked up the telephone. He pressed a few buttons, waited, and then said, there's a bank thief hiding in the house next door, and he has a gun. Then he gave the police the address of the yellow house. Cam, Eric, Mr. Jansen, and the Millers went to the front window to watch for the police. While the others looked to the right towards the yellow house, Cam looked for a, a, looked for a moment the other way. She saw a woman come out of the large white house across the street, and she was carrying a suitcase. Look, Cam said, it's the woman again. She's walking this way. Maybe her friend saw us watching him, and now they're going to run away. Cam ran to the front door of the Miller's house and went outside. Wait, the police will get her, Mr. Miller called. Mr. Jansen said, I have to stop her. That woman might be dangerous. Mr. Jansen and Eric quickly followed Cam outside. Cam was holding the broom, pretending to be sweeping the front walkway. She, what she was really doing is she was watching to see what the woman would do. Stop, Mr. Jansen called out. Cam stopped sweeping. She turned to look at her father. The woman stopped too. Now she knows I'm watching her, Cam whispered. The woman turned and began to run the other way. Cam dropped the broom and ran to the sidewalk. She looked straight at the running woman, blinked her eyes and said, click. Then she started to walk after the woman. Screech! There were suddenly, there were flashing lights as three police cars quickly turned the corner. They sped past the running woman and Cam. Mr. Jansen waved his hands and signaled to them to stop. The first two didn't. They sped past Mr. Jansen to the front of the yellow house. But the third car stopped. There were two police officers sitting in the front seat. Mr. Jansen spoke quickly through the open window of the car. My daughter, it's dangerous. She's following that woman. He was too upset to even speak clearly. Eric explained, you just passed a woman who was running with a suitcase. She's a partner of the thief. Eric pointed to Mr. Jansen. His daughter is following her. Get in, said one of the police officers. Eric and Mr. Jansen sat in the back of the police car, and the officer driving the car was a woman with short blonde hair. The name on her tag said Robinson. The other officer was a man. The name on his tag was Gomez. He turned to the back and told Eric and Mr. Jansen, put your seatbelts on. My daughter has red hair, Mr. Jansen said, and the woman she's following has long brown hair, Eric told the police. She's wearing dark glasses and a long blue raincoat. Officer Robinson quickly turned the car around and sped toward Cam and the woman. Cam was in the middle of the next block. Officer Robinson stopped the car and Cam got in. The woman just went around the corner, Cam said. Then she told her father, don't worry, I wasn't getting too close. They turned the corner. Officer Robinson drove slowly down the street and they all looked for the woman. There were many people going in and out of the stores along the street. Then at the end of the block, they saw the woman run into a large supermarket. Officer Robinson stopped the car. She and Officer Gomez ran out past some people pushing shopping carts and into the store. Cam, Eric, and Mr. Jansen were right behind them. There were many aisles lined with shelves of cans, boxes, and bags of food, and there were many people pushing shopping carts and a few lines of people waiting to pay for their groceries. You wait here so she can't get out, Officer Robinson said to her partner. I'll search the store. Cam, Eric, and Mr. Jansen went with Officer Robinson. They walked through the entire store, but they didn't find the woman. 
Is there another way out of here? Officer Robinson asked one of the people who worked in the store. There's an emergency exit by the frozen food cases, the work answered, but if you open the door, a loud bell sounds. They walk to the emergency exit. The door was closed. Let's keep looking, Officer Robinson said. It shouldn't be too so difficult to find a woman carrying a suitcase. Just then, behind the dairy case, Eric stopped. Look, he said, and he pointed to a suitcase, a blue raincoat, a wig of brown hair, and a pair of dark glasses lying on the floor. She's not carrying a suitcase anymore. We'll never find her now. Chapter 8. Yes, we will. We'll find her, Cam said. Then she closed her eyes and clicked. What is she doing? Officer Robinson asked. Mr. Jansen whispered, she's trying to remember something. Cam clicked again. Then she opened her eyes and said she was wearing a long raincoat, but it didn't reach all the way down. She has red sneakers on and blue jeans. Quick, grab those things, Officer Robinson told Mr. Jansen. We have to catch her before she leaves here. When they got to the front of the store, they found Officer Gomez stand, still standing there. No one wearing a long coat and carrying a suitcase left while I was watching, he told his partner. Did anyone leave wearing red sneakers and blue jeans, she asked. He thought for a minute, moment, then he shook his head slowly and said, I don't know, I wasn't looking at their feet. The two police officers ran to the door and looked outside. Mr. Jansen followed them. Meanwhile, Cam slow, walked slowly and quietly towards the people waiting to pay for groceries. Where are you going? Eric asked. Shh. Cam pointed to the last line. Someone wearing red sneakers and blue jeans was crouched down, hiding behind the other shoppers. Cam got closer. Then she looked to the front door and saw Officer Gomez standing there. He was about to come inside. Cam jumped behind the woman and shouted, Here she is! Don't let her run outside! When the woman heard that, she ran straight for the door, just as Cam had hoped she would. And she ran right into the arms of Officer Gomez. I'm innocent! I'm innocent! The woman said. I didn't rob the bank. Sam did. I just helped him hide. Officer Gomez spoke softly. Helping a criminal escape is a crime, too. He took a printed card from his pocket. He read from it, warning the woman that anything she said could be used as evidence, to, evidence sorry, against her. He locked her in handcuffs and led her to the police car. Officer Robinson put the suitcase, coat, and wig in the trunk. Both police officers thanked Cam, Eric, and Mr. Jansen for all of their help. It's lucky that you remembered she was wearing red sneakers, Officer Robinson said. That wasn't luck, Eric told her. Cam always remembers whatever she sees. The officer said they were sorry for driving off with Cam, Eric, and Mr. Jansen. But with the woman sitting in the back seat, there was no room for them. After the police officers left, Mr. Jansen said, Well, we can't stay here. Let's walk back to my car. They passed many shoppers along the way. Eric was anxious to, tell, to sell them chocolate fudge bars and rice cakes for Ride and Read, but Cam didn't let him. She was in a hurry to see if the police had arrested Sam, the bank robber. When they reached Mr. Jansen's car, they saw a few police cars parked in front of the yellow house. We'll watch from here, Mr. Jansen said. The police don't need our help, and it might be dangerous to get too close. They saw the man who had been hiding in the yellow house come outside with his hands raised. He was followed by two police officers. The man was locked in handcuffs and led to a police car. Then, one after another, the police cars turned around and drove off. The last police car stopped by Cam, Eric, and Mr. Jansen. A tall officer with gold, with gold, braid, on the gold braid on the shoulder of his jacket got out of the car. He came over to Mr. Jansen and introduced himself. I'm Captain Gardner. Are you the one who found the thief? Mr. Jansen shook his head. No, it was my daughter Jennifer and her friend Eric. Well, Captain Gardner said as he shook Cam's hand and then Eric's hand, 
on behalf of the people of the city, I thank both of you. I'm sure the local newspaper and TV reporters will want to know that two young children helped us find a dangerous criminal. Captain Gardner took out a small notepad. He wrote Cam's and Eric's names and their addresses. Now, Captain Gardner said, as he turned and started to walk to his car, you've helped me. If at any time I can help you, please let me know. Wait, Eric called out. You can help me now. We're selling chocolate fudge bars and rice cakes to help raise money for Ride and Read. We bring homebound elderly to our local library. Captain Gardner bought two rice cakes from Cam and Eric and told them, now follow me and I'll help you raise a lot more money for Ride and Read. At the police station, Captain Gardner announced that Cam and Eric were raising money for charity. Cam entertained the police officers by doing memory tricks. Cam looked at all the officers gathered around Eric. She closed her eyes and she said, click. Officer Adams has red hair, Cam said, and his necktie is crooked. Officer Lopez has three rings on his left hand. Maybe she's peeking, one of the officers said. Maybe her eyes are not closed all the way. Cam turned around and went on. Officer Davis has a drop of mustard on her collar. She's amazing, Officer Davis said. Mr. Jansen smiled and said, yes, she is, and she's my daughter. I hope you enjoyed our read aloud this week. So tune in next week for a new Cam Jansen mystery. Have a great weekend.